Hi, this is Jeremy Moskowitz from GPAnswers.com, and today we're going to talk about auditing, some myths, and some facts. So, uh, you know, let's, take, let's pretend we have a share here called Share2. We have this file called secret.txt, and if we open it up, you know, it's not really a secret. But the idea is that you might want to figure out who's touching this file, who is manipulating it, and who's uh, maybe tried to read it or edit it or do other things to it. So auditing is a really big deal, and you want to make sure that your most important files are being audited in case of a hack attack or somebody doing something they shouldn't do or lots of other reasons. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to turn auditing on. Now here's the secret. The secret is, is that if you go to the properties here, and you click on security, and you look under advanced, and you go to auditing, this is where auditing, uh, uh, a lot of people think auditing begins here. It doesn't really begin here at all. It actually begins somewhere else. It kind of ends here. But let's go ahead and we'll, we'll add in. We're going to edit this. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in the people who we're looking for. So maybe we're looking for Sally, East Sales User 1. What are they doing to this file? Maybe we're looking for a group that somebody's in, like backup operators. Maybe we want to know what they're doing. Or we could also look for what maybe everyone or authenticated users is doing. Okay? So the point of the story is you're laying down what I like to call flypaper for a particular user computer, uh, sorry, a user or a group that the person's on, uh, on the computer. So either uh, Sally or uh, the, you know, the sales group or everyone, okay, authenticated users. And you can, you can turn on various attributes like uh, what happens when somebody reads the, uh, the attributes of a file, which actually includes read access because there's no way to read the file without read attributes. Or maybe they try to, uh, or they they try to change the permissions on it, and they're successful in that. Or they, or they fail. They try to, uh, they try to write some stuff, but uh oh, they didn't have access, so they failed doing that. So long story short, you can set the uh, permissions that you want to here, <clears throat> that you want to audit for. Now, when you click OK and OK and OK <laughs> and OK, once you've done that, you actually really haven't done anything yet, especially if you're on a server or a workstation machine. What you really need to do, uh, from group policies perspective, let's pretend that that was uh, on a server somewhere. Uh, let's say it was on, uh, on, let's see, my East Sales servers. You really need to turn on auditing. So we'll turn on auditing here. All right. So what I'm trying to drive at is that auditing isn't officially turned on on your servers, unless you or your workstations, unless you really turn auditing on. So under computer side policies, Windows settings. All right under security settings here. We're going to dive down under local uh, audit policy here. And when you're looking for the various auditing types, now files happen to be uh, live under the heading of audit object access, and I just happen to know that one. So long story short, I'm going to, I'm going to turn these guys on, click OK, and now auditing is officially enabled. At this point, I'd be able to go touch the file, look in the auditing event logs, and see that actually who's touched the file and done what based on my specifications. So those are some myths and facts behind auditing. I hope that helps you out. And for more information on this topic or any other topic about group policy, especially uh, training and other kinds of assistance, I'm here to help you at gpanswers.com. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you soon.